Well, welcome to RDWorks Learning Lab. Today we're going to take a look at two problems, at least two problems, that people have mentioned to me. Can I explain why? One I can explain why, and the other one I can't explain why. So we're going to do a few experiments to see if we can come up with an answer to the question. Question number one is, why does the beam drag? If you don't know what beam drag is, I will demonstrate that to you in a minute. The other question is, I've got little rough edges on my acrylic cuts. How can I get them nice and smooth? Now maybe some of you guys already know the answer to this question, but the majority of people, um, me included, doesn't know the answer to at least one of those questions. So what we're going to do is just have a bit of a play here. And we're going to change one factor at a time. So what we've got here is some 8mm acrylic. Now I've already measured the power out of my nozzle here and I know that I've got approximately 60 watts coming out there. Because I've got uh, a one and a half inch lens in here, I've got a distance away from the work of only about 6 or 6.25 I think it is, a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to set my focus up, first of all, to sit right on the surface of the job. I've got a pressure control valve on my machine and if you listen carefully I can turn the air pressure off or it's certainly right down. So we could have it, if I can get it just right, there we go, we can just hear a whisper. There's just enough positive air coming out of that nozzle to make sure that we don't get any fumes back up on the lens. So that's about as weak as I can possibly get it. So we've got several factors that we can play with. We're going to play with speed. We can play with power, but it's best to keep the power fixed and just change the speed. We can change the airflow so that we can see what effect cooling or clearing of the fumes has. And then we can change one other vital thing as well. What I'm going to do is do a series of test squares. I want to use acrylic so that you can see clearly what's happening to the cut. Several other people have asked me, what does through hole do? What's through hole power? Well, I'm going to demonstrate here what through hole power is. I have set on my program through hole power ticked and just above it there are two windows. The top window is the important one because that's when you start the cut. Why on earth you'd want one at the end of the cut I don't know, but when you start the cut you will see that the cut stands still for half a second because I've programmed that to 500 milliseconds and it will pierce through and then it will move off so you will have a hole through before you even start moving and you will see that happening at the beginning of this square. turn some extraction on. Now you can see the beam dragging there. Oh dear and it hasn't dropped out. So I'm going a bit too fast. No. Nope. So that was six millimeters a second. Now I think you can clearly see on this here how we've got striations it's not a very smooth cut. Okay I've now reduced the speed to four millimeters a second and we'll see what effect this has. So it's pierced through and now it's moving off. Oh it's a bit of a strange, it's still dragging, look can you see that? I would say we're cutting through this time because all the uh, fumes are underneath but it's still dragging, even though I've reduced the speed. And I would say it's nearly dropped out, look. There we go. If we look along the bottom edge of the cut, you can see the little striations along the bottom of the cut there. It's not bad for 60% hmm, of the depth, 80% of the depth but you can clearly see something's going on on the last two millimetres. Okay, now we've set to two millimetres per second.
beam is still dragging even though we're going really slowly. But the gas is coming out underneath. And I have got the merest whisper of gas on there at the moment. I think you see the beam is not dragging quite as much. But it's still definitely dragging. Okay, let's take a look at this one now. I don't know whether you can see the edge this time. It is not bad at all. Going slowly, we've got a lovely smooth mirror polished edge on there now and I can feel that this piece is hot, the edge is hot and that's because we're going so slowly that the heat is actually flame polishing the edge as it goes. We're improving the edge cut and the depth of the cut, the quality, but something that you might notice on there if we can catch it in the light right let's just see if we catch it in the light right and that's that these edges are not really upright and what I wanted to show you there really was because we've got through power on to start with in other words we've pierced the hole to start with it doesn't make a lot of difference we're getting beam drag even though we're starting off with a nice clean upright cut now I'm going to change the program and we're going to go for just a straightforward 25 millimeter square okay so now we're going to do four millimeters a second with no start with no through hole to start with You see we've got beam drag across the front there, quite significant. And the laser should start immediately. It hasn't. So why is there a delay there, an odd delay? Have I still got my 500 milliseconds in there without a through hole? I reckon I have, that's what the problem is. I've still got a 500 millisecond delay in there before I start the cut. Well, that's interesting. So you've got to be careful of that. It could be useful, <laughs> it could be annoying like I've just found out. So I've got to go back and edit the program now and take that 500 millisecond out and make it zero. Even though I haven't got the through hole ticked, it delays the onset of the beam. Now that we've taken that 500 millisecond delay out, we'll try a 25 millimeter square. There we go. That was quite an interesting observation. So let's take a look and see what this beam is doing as it travels across the front here. Four millimeters a second. It's not quite as draggy, but it's definitely draggy. and it dropped out. Now it's hung up on a corner because the beam is dragging it didn't quite cut the bottom corner and again if we look carefully we shall find that the edges are not exactly upright they're not square. The surface is not too bad but we're definitely from two millimeters away from the bottom we've definitely got some um, some striations. There we go. Now I've just turned the extraction off and what I'm going to do now, turn it off so you can hear, I'm going to turn the air pressure on full so that we can see what effect increasing the air pressure has. And 
I would say looking at that across the back there, it's even more draggy. Oh yes, it's very draggy now. It's dropped out. There's actually a slight improvement, but the edges seem to be very out of square. Now I'm going to try something slightly different. Full air, definitely dragging. You're seeing a reflection at the bottom there, that's why it's a sort of a bit of a V shape. Okay, now we're coming across the front here and See what I was doing there. I was playing with the focus. So what I'm now going to do, because that was rather interesting, I don't know whether you observed it, but I certainly saw something. In fact I do have a piece of three millimeter material here. So we're now three millimetres off the surface, which means we're about three and a half millimetres into the job with the focus point. No beam drag at all. have a lovely polished edge. Now, what I'm now going to do is try something else. I'm now going to increase the speed back up to six millimeters a second. And remember all the tests that we've done so far, six millimeters per second has not dropped out. No beam drag, six millimetres a second. Just about did it. We're getting a small hint of striations across the bottom again. If you go slower, you will flame polish the edge better. And if you push the focus point into the material, you will get more depth of cut but you'll also get a smoother finish all the way through your cut. Okay now finally I'm going to do something very strange. First of all I've put the speed back to four millimeters a second and I've still got the nozzle set three millimeters above the surface but I'm going to start the cut off right in the middle of that previous square. When we started looking at these and saying well the the edge looks as though it's you know not cutting square it's completely off angle. I realized that there was a problem that I needed to show you. There we go. Quite a nice clean upright cut. Now I'm going to do something strange. I'm going to set the speed on my machine to two. Sorry, I'm going to set it to four millimeters a second. And I'm going to change the power, max power, to 65%, which is what I was cutting the program at. Okay, so I've now set my manual speed controls. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold the pulse button down, and I'm going to drive the head manually. And I'm doing a manual cut now. Now I'm going to take it down this way. I'm cutting across my work that's underneath there. Now we'll go back. Now I'll go up. 
So I've done a manual cut there without going anywhere near the programming system. So there we are. We've cut our we'll cut our piece of material out like a jigsaw puzzle. Right, let's have a look at this carefully. If I push those parts together like that, that's obviously not the cut because if I pull it one way, that's twice the, the thickness of the cut, and if I push it together, that's not the cut. But if you look at the way in which the shapes don't match up, both of them are actually going the opposite way to the shape of the beam. The beam is necked, but the centre of that cut, halfway through the material, has actually got bigger. And then if you look carefully at the bottom of the cut, you'll see the bottom of the cut is touching, but the top of the cut, there's actually a gap at the top. There's a very short focus of only something less than a millimetre, I think, on this machine, on, with my 38mm lens. The focal distance is very, very short. And after that, the beam starts diverging and getting out of focus. And as it gets out of focus, obviously, the beam gets bigger in diameter and its effective density, power density, gets less, which means it has less and less cutting power the further we get away from the focus point. But that then accounts for why we haven't got such a cut at the bottom there. Look, the power is disappearing. The cutting power is disappearing at the bottom of the cut. And so consequently, that's why the bottom of the cut is actually narrower than the top of the cut. Just because the edge is not square doesn't necessarily mean to say that the beam isn't square. It's all to do with the heat radiation and the shape of the beam and the power of the beam at a specific point through the cut. So those of you with two inch lenses for example will have less of this problem. You will be able to focus up better and probably have a straighter cut when you're cutting thicker materials but then again you won't be able to cut such thick materials because your power density is lower. So we're into a bit of a circular situation here. But, you know, but if you've got a lot of power, 60, 80 watt machine, then you should be able to cut 8 millimeter with no problem at all and probably get reasonably straight edges, better edges than I can get. Because, because we cut it very slowly, it's a superb quality edge. All I'm saying to you is, although the edge isn't upright, don't run away with the idea that there's something wrong with your machine because there probably isn't. It's all to do with the way in which the energy density in the beam is affecting the material that you're cutting.